I watched Canadian woodturner Art Listerman demonstrate a technique called lost wood at a regional symposium several years ago, and I didn't do anything with it. A uh, fellow club member, Steve Mallott, uh, we were both members of the Gwinnett Woodworkers, immediately did something with it and did a demonstration on it. I finally got around to using that technique to make this fish. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So I cut two blocks, a little over an inch, uh, inch thick with a piece of scrapped, scrap pine, about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to glue it up with these craft paper so I can make a nice uh, joint that makes it easy to... Uh, to split this paper joint, so I'm just going to put on a little bit of put on a little glue. Well, I should have gotten my clamps out. Now I got to get a set, set of clamps out. I could probably put another clamp on it, but I don't think it, for what I'm doing, it's going to make any difference. I've got it roughly squared up. That's good. We just let it dry. I carefully mark the center piece, the center, by, by squaring up the corner. I've got enough slack that it, even if the glue is not exactly squared up, it won't make any difference as long as we got that center piece, because we can turn away the rest of the wood, but that center piece we really want to be, be square. Or centered on each end. Okay, I've mounted the blank between centers. Now I'm going to turn it round. Using a spindle roughing gouge. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, then lift only then, when you start seeing shavings, do you start moving the tool. Got the tool anchored on my hip. Turn turner's dance. Using my beating and parting tool, I'm going to... Put this in my normal jaws. Now put it in a chuck. Okay, I'm going to face this end off first. Just use a spindle gouge. Spindle gouge. Slightly concave this. Okay. Now I'm going to drill, drill a hole down the middle, one inch drill. One thing I did not do, and I meant to, is I'm going to stop and do that. I'm going to drill some holes through here so I can judge the depth of this from, from the holes. So let's do that. Let's see if I can't do a little better on this end. Okay, you're going to have to be a lot more careful than I am when you're drilling these holes. I should have done this when the blank was square. Drill a depth hole. There's four inches. Now we're going to start just shaping what I think the, the fish ought to look at. I should have a uh, drawing or a sketch, but I'm just going to kind of wing this first one and then I'll do better on the second one. So we're going to bring it around here to the front, get the speed up a little bit. Actually, 
before I go too far, I'm actually going to hollow this out a little bit more. On this front end, and I think the easiest way to hollow that for this kind of project is probably to use a box scraper. And that's the one where this is less than 90 degrees and I'm going to come down the side here. Uh, I want the walls of this thing to be, oh, I'm not sure, maybe at least a quarter of an inch. what this is going to look like without that waste wood coming together. So it's going to have a fairly open mouth. I think I'm just going to smooth this end over a little bit. Smooth this a little bit. going to be the end of the fish right here. So I'm going to bring that shape down to here. Uh, before I do that, I think I'm going to just go ahead and take a parting cut to kind of mark this. right right at the end of where the hole is. So if I'm not careful, uh, this is going to come flying off. So let me take one more part on this side to give me a little more room for shaping. through here. I don't think that's going to be real important for this particular fish. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that down a little bit more here. side of that mouth. So I think I need to do that. Before I go too much further, I'm just going to come in here and just bring that around. Let's see if I can't find a spindle scrap to be a jam chuck. Negative two more, right? Switch back to my 
spindle gouge. And start shaping this. Now, I've already gotten all the way past the cherry. Um, so that's fine. Uh, I'm going to split this and I'm going to sand the very end here before I take this off. All right, I've got a fairly, fairly wide chisel. If I could just find the seam here, a little more light here so I can see. goes nothing. Did I get it close? I did get it close. And there we go. Now let's do the other side. Let's hope I get as lucky with it. I'm doing this on the tail end because I can clean up the tail end better than I can the front, the mouth. I don't want to damage it. Okay. You can see how that, that paper joint works out well. I've got that scrap. Now, unfortunately, I did make those mistakes, but you know, I may be able to use this, this hole, now that I think about it, one of these holes, that could wind up being to mount this thing. But So that's going to give me the profile of that fish, that lost wood design. And I want to sand it a little bit flat. So the easiest way to do that, I don't want to do that on a belt sander, it might be a little too aggressive, so I'll use my sanding board just to get rid of the paper that's on here. Is it coming off fast enough? And I think it is. could use CA, but I'm more comfortable gluing wood to wood wherever I can with uh, carpenter's glue, so I'm using some original tight bond. Just get it evenly on both surfaces. If you just rub these two surfaces together like this, pretty soon they'll get start getting stiff and they'll almost be done. I'm going to press these down. So the, the front is even. And I'm just going to so be careful with it slipping and sliding here. Try to get these surfaces nice and even. And I'm just going to let that dry like that. So I took some thin cardboard and uh, came up with a couple of different uh, fin designs. I traced it out on this very thin quarter inch uh, thick piece of spalted sycamore. And now I'm going to go over to scroll saw and just cut out that outline. There's multiple ways you can join the uh, fins, but I'm going to try something. I'm going to cut a, a very small slot that I think this will slide into right on the end. That's why I flattened it just a little bit with a sander. Very deep, just deep enough to just to be able to fit in, fit into. Now I simply laid this over top and drew the profile of the pencil. Now we're going to take this and use a uh, belt sander to kind of smooth that and trial fit it. And then I'll use a the uh, scroll saw to cut these little jagged edges. To drill its eyes, I either use a brad point bit or a small Forstner bit. I tried different sizes and I feel like uh, there's not a big difference between either the brad point or the Forstner in these small sizes. I'm going to use a 316 inch because I think it's sized 
just about right. I make a very small starter hole for the point with an awl on both sides. I'm going to use this uh, sandbag to kind of support this and I'm going to come in and drill at 90 degrees to the wood until it just breaks that surface. And then I'm going to rock this just a little bit. And there we have it. Maybe just go back in and get that top rocking in that direction just a little bit more. And there's a nice eye. And then I repeat on the other side. Again, that starter hole, 90 degrees to the wood. Lock it around, make sure you touch all sides. And there we've got those, those eyes. I use a soft malleable wire from the craft shop to uh, drill uh, reinforcing little pins using a pin vise uh, to help support it. And it's the same technique I use for miniature birds and fastening them onto the roof of a miniature birdhouse. Okay, I'm getting ready to glue the fins on, or as we say down the south, I'm fixing to glue the fins on. Um, one little trick, put a little shellac uh, around the hole so if you have any bleed out on your uh, CA glue, it's easily dealt with. I sand the fins to a 45 degree angle so they'll fit well uh, against the curve of the uh, body of the fish. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on each one. I'm just going to let that dry before we do the next one. I find an interesting scrap of wood in my discard pile and I use some Chromacraft uh, spray dye. Uh, I use multiple colors of green and blue to kind of get a different effect. Bark inclusion, burl's nice. Uh, this has 10% shellac in it so it tends to uh, dry very fast and, and I like that. I drill a small hole and glue in a piece of 1 8 inch brass rod and I drill another hole on the bottom uh, for the fish. An option to using the stand is just making the fins uh, a three-point contact like a tripod. In this case it's pointing up. I would probably want the front fins a little bit smaller or the back fin a little bit taller so it would be kind of parallel. But that's another design option. The finish I use is some spray lacquer. Several coats. Let that dry, come back and do another one. My wife thought the original fin was too large, so I resized it with the Dremel tool. And if you want an easier fish, here's one that I made before without the lost wood technique with a fish and the back tail is one piece. If you've used this technique of lost wood in a, in a project, let me know what you used it for and how it went for you. Your comments and questions matter, so leave them in the uh, comment section below. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.